Who's ready to ski into a big old pile of money? Um, Listen. If you want to be a really successful entrepreneur, be your business. own boss. I, that's why I'm here. I think you should listen to all the offers. Two and a half percent, and you have a deal. What happened to the two percent? What are Either your thoughts you want well? a partner, or you don't take hundred thousand thirty-three percent. Would you take thirty? I will take thirty. <laughs> 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 Shark Tank, Sunday starting 3 Eastern. CNBC's Equity and Opportunity, voices and visibility for all. Meet Mackenzie Farquay of Lockwood, a small neighborhood shop with big dreams. My number one goal with Lockwood is that you walk in and feel inspired. I source products everywhere. Queer people, artists of color. I didn't always embrace who I fully was when I met my wife. Now I'm very proud, I'm very open. You should be proud of who you are every day, and that's my stance at Lockwood. Learn more at CNBC's EquityAndOpportunity.com. Live from the Ed McMahon Mass Communications Center at Quinnipiac University, this is QNN, the Quinnipiac News Network. Hello and welcome to QNN. I'm Katie Cohen. And I'm Lane Healy. Thanks for joining us. We start with breaking news tonight on the court. The head men's basketball coach is resigning. QNN sports reporter Emily Sweeney has more. Yes, guys, I'm currently in the m and Bank Arena, the home of the Quinnipiac men's basketball team and head coach Baker Dunleavy, who just announced earlier today that he is resigning. As Dunleavy goes back to Villanova, assistant head coach of the Bobcats, Tom Pacora, will be taking on all of the head coaching responsibilities for the Bobcats, effective immediately. That's all I have here at the m and Bank Arena. Back to you guys at the desk. Before Dunleavy's announcement, the biggest buzz on campus centered around Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team. Last weekend, they won the Frozen Four National Championship for the first time in program history. I talked to students today about what they think of the victory. You know, um, you know, Katie, I have to agree with the students on this one. This is just such an exciting time to be at Quinnipiac. I agree. It's definitely something that I'm never going to forget. Winning a national championship for the first time in history is crazy. So where did you watch the big game? I actually watched on York Hill at the watch party. It was so much fun just being around everyone and just bouncing energy off of each other. Yeah, unfortunately I was, I was not able to be there, but I wish I was able to. And speaking of that, while students gathered at the Rocky Top Student Center to watch the victory, there were also watch parties around the country. People in cities like New York City, Austin, Texas, and Washington, D.C. had opportunities to see the Bobcats play on the big screen. Local Hampton hotspots, especially Eli's on Whitney, were also packed. QNN's Vanessa Blasi has more on how the town was impacted by the big win. After history was made right here in Hamden on Saturday, the town has been decorated in signs just like this one right behind me. The community has been celebrating all week long. Let's see how the win has impacted the town. Many locals agree that the excitement felt right here at Eli's on Saturday will be one they won't forget for many years to come. Reporting live for QNN, I'm Vanessa Blasi. In even more exciting campus news, Quinnipiac Student Programming Board announced Tuesday that the headliner for this year's Wake the Giant is rapper Offset. The performer was announced in an email to students, then the organization held a reveal party in the piazza. Students were given free food and merch and also had the opportunity to win free tickets through a Kahoot. Although floor tickets have already been sold out for the artist's August, April 30th performance, there's still time to get your tickets through the student ticket portal. Now over to the Student Government Association, who held info sessions for its open positions next year. Current SGA President Awane Roberts spoke with interested students throughout the week on the process of running for SGA. In order to run for election later this month, students must attend one of these meetings. More information can be found on the QU SGA Instagram. Looking for something to do tonight? The School of Communications will be hosting its fourth Mountain Film Festival. The festival will show a series of short films created by alumni and professional filmmakers. Doors now have opened and the screenings begin at 7. Before then, students can play cornhole and ping pong while enjoying free food and refreshments. Moving from Hamden to news across the nation, a late night decision has changed the future of access to one abortion pill. QNN's Carly McManus has more on what comes next. Carly? Thanks, Lane and Katie. There is new updates on the abortion pill that the Justice Department just announced earlier this week that they would appeal a federal judge's ruling that would block access to that drug. Attorney General said that they would take the case to the Supreme Court. 
Garland's announcement comes after a federal appeals court froze parts of the Texas judge's order that would have suspended the government's approval of the abortion drug. Earlier this week, a mass shooting occurred at the Old National Bank in Louisville, Kentucky. Five people were killed and eight others were injured, including two responding police officers. The shooter, a 25-year-old employee, was later fatally shot by officers. The family of the Louisville shooter said he had mental health challenges, but there was no warning signs of the mass shooting. A prosecutor in Virginia shared on Monday that the mother of a six-year-old boy who seriously wounded his teacher with a gun in January will face charges in the shooting. The shooting, which occurred on January 6th of a first grade teacher in Newport, which stunned the community, especially when police announced the child's actions were intentional. A grand jury prosecuted the mother on charges with leaving a firearm so close to the child. Prosecutors said that they would not be charging the student. And spring has sprung in Connecticut and it has certainly sprung in California. A, wild, a wildflower super bloom returned to California after a rainy winter. Many Californians traveling to state parks caught a glimpse of the fantastic super blooms in the northern and southern parts of the state. The heavy rain for the state had triggered sprouting of wildflower seeds leading to the super bloom. I'm Carla McManus. That is all the national news I have for this week. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Carly. Up next, one of Quinnipiac's biggest events is set to kick, kick off this weekend. Find out how the organization and students are preparing. Plus, it's starting to feel like summer out there. Some parts of Connecticut even broke records today. Learn if the sunshine will continue through the weekend. We'll be right back. Hi. I'm Melanie Carreri, and we are here at Dunkin' Donuts Park, one of the most inclusive organizations in minor league baseball. Why? Because not only do they hire those in the disabled community, but also provide them with a number of opportunities. For the past six years, Dunkin' Donuts Park has been providing accessibilities for both employees and visitors. Accommodations include being a peanut-free facility, as well as providing handicapped parking, ramps, and much more. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, good, thanks. All right. This is Christopher Nunez. He has been working at Dunkin' Donuts Park as a security guard and customer service employee for the past two years. Born and raised in Puerto Rico, Christopher was born with spina bifida, which caused paralysis in his legs. Despite his disability, he doesn't let it stop him. After hearing about the position of a security guard at the stadium and a new minor league team coming to town, he wanted to take on the role right away. I wanted to be a part of something new and something that was going to be a positive thing for Hartford. The positive impact the stadium makes on Hartford goes beyond baseball. To employees and visitors, it's a home run. It's not wood. It's not wood. Have fun. It's fun. Fans with disabilities feel at ease with the accessibilities and layout. It's clean and very accessible, and they're very uh, helpful. Just the handicap seating, it's given me enough space to have my wheelchair and be comfortable. It's not a better place to be, honestly. The Yard Goats president, Tim Restall, wants people to understand the importance of diversity and inclusion. We want everyone to feel welcome here and everyone to have a great time. We're in the business of putting smiles on people's faces, and that's what we try to do every single day, no matter what the reason, no matter what the cost. The Yard Goats pride themselves in ensuring everyone has equal opportunities to enjoy the games. I know we have some staff members. I know we're always trying to think outside the box. And like I said, we always wanted to be everyone's ballpark. So when we, when we find things that we can make better by giving better accessibility, we have to make those changes right away because it's the right thing to do. As visitors walk through the gates, Christopher wants to prove people's disabilities do not define their capabilities. I, I have a brain, you know, I not only, you know, I have a heart, you know, the only thing that's not 100% uh, working is my legs, you know, so don't, don't count me out because I'm wheelchair bound and I can't walk. According to the Yard Goat's head of security, David DiMatteo, Christopher's work at the stadium has shown his strength and determination. His disability doesn't stop him from doing things. You know, he carries himself so well and he deals with situations here with the fans. You know, some, some are bad situations, but he handles himself very well. 
Christopher hopes to empower visitors and the disabled community. I'm not going to be the only one to come to different places that don't have the accessibility. So I've tried to make it known and be an example and then also speak up for people who are going to be the future patrons of different places. In the meantime, Dunkin' Donuts Park is said to be quite the catch for all baseball fans. I think this is the, the best minor league ballpark in the state of Connecticut. And that's a wrap on the stories of inclusivity here at the Dunkin' Donuts Park. For more information, you can visit the Yargoats website. And of course, for more stories and content, follow our socials. I'm Melanie Carreri for Ability Media. It's not every day athletes get to compete in the Olympics, let alone become an Olympian and a viral TikTok star. Quinnipiac alumna Alona Marr has managed to do both. She became a star on and off the Olympic rugby field only three years after graduating from college. Although she majored in nursing, Marr knew she had to make it her mission to further her career in rugby. And I was in the weight room all day, like I trained two times, three times a day, um, focused on studies and then got called up and have been training for three years with the USA team just to make the Olympics. So uh, it was a it was a whirlwind, but it was awesome. While she played in the Tokyo Olympics, Mar gained the title of TikTok Queen by the New York Post and other major media organizations. Mar did not expect to become as popular as she did. With over 800,000 TikTok followers, her goal is to promote rugby and inspire athletes. TikTok and all these other platforms is a great way for us athletes to get ourselves out there. And TikTok also is a fun way to get people to, into rugby and to into my team. And I was using it a little bit beforehand, but still had minor growth. And then I think people just loved the humor and loved the non-pretentiousness, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, of my TikToks. And I was given the inside look of that athletes were not just, yes, we're, we work so hard and we're Olympians, but also we love to have fun. We're funny. And, um, you know, we're, we're also awkward and do all sorts of other things. Mar wants young athletes who want to pursue a career in their sport to understand the importance of balance between their sport, schoolwork, and social life. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice and a lot of hard work, but it doesn't mean you can't have fun. You can't be a person. Um, it's just all about balance and really timing that out. Alona Mar is a powerhouse on and off the rugby field. Whether she is playing rugby or dancing on TikTok, Mar is an inspiration to many. Melanie Carreri reporting for Q30 News.